All right, so uh, this is a quick follow-up video to my two previous videos on driving an RC car with a PlayStation 3 controller. That is this guy, wireless P uh, PlayStation 3 controller. Uh, and I just want to address some of the most common questions I get, as well as show a, a wiring diagram, which is often requested. Um, so one thing that I get questions about a lot is the car. Even though uh, I do list the car, if you follow the link in the description of my previous videos to my website, where I have a list of uh, resources, um, people still ask what the car is, and it is an Exceed RC uh, one-tenth scale brushless short course truck, and I bought it at nitrorcx.com. Uh, Another th question I get is, uh, would you recommend this car? And I would definitely not. It is... Uh, pretty terrible in terms of uh, quality. Uh, one nice component is the motor. It is uh, very powerful and I've never had uh, overheating issues with it. Uh, but the rest of the components are pretty shoddy. Um, for example, the ESC, the electronic speed controller, this thing, overheats uh, very, very quickly on a three cell LiPo even though it says it should support it in the data sheet. Uh, also, uh, the servo it came with is plastic geared and the teeth broke. Uh, so I replaced this with a steel gear, gear servo. And it's really not acceptable for them to have put a plastic gear servo on here because the metal gear ones are not much more expensive and they are much stronger. Uh, another thing is that the shock towers bend very easily in crashes. They have this really thin aluminum. Uh, and uh, the bumpers are almost useless. They, as you can see, this one has had better days. Uh, they, I would say you'd need something at least three to four times beefier than this to actually protect this car when you run into things. Um, the wheels, I don't have a whole lot of experience with wheels. These are plasticky. They worked okay. Uh, and then the drivetrain, the drivetrain seemed to have held up okay. I mean, it's still working. It is full four-wheel drive, and uh, although it has a lot of slop, it it, it doesn't seem to uh, be a problem. It works well. So no, I would not suggest buying this car. Oh, one other thing I forgot is that the radio range was really short. I don't know what's wrong. I can't tell if it's just a really, really, really cheap transmitter or a cheap receiver or some combination of the two, but the range was probably... 75 feet which is absurd it should be a kilometer uh, so really really cheap radios so although this car is when I, I remember I think I paid about 160 for it uh, it's really not worth it just go buy a brand name car like a Traxxas if you want something that will last and not drive you up the wall because it's breaking all the time uh, okay so that's the car don't buy it it's not very good oh yeah one some people have uh, been a little confused about the car is that it has this purple metal body this is not the stock frame uh, the stock frame was a black plastic one that broke and nitro rcx did not have a replacement one in stock for several months uh, i emailed them uh, i don't even remember if i got a response but uh they never had the plastic one in stock so i had to buy the metal one, which wasn't stock, but the metal one is for the gas version of the car. So the gas will have a little engine on it. Uh, so none of the holes, well not none, but very few of the holes were in the correct places for the electric components. So I had to drill out a lot of things and I even had to cut out a portion to fit the motor. So this uh, frame is, is a custom job. It does not come with a metal frame and it's, uh, it wasn't fun or easy to make this one fit. So. Don't buy this car. It's not good. Uh, okay, so that's that's it for the hardware of the car. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, the theory of what's happening here. A lot of people ask me, oh, how can I extend the range? Because a uh, Bluetooth has a range of about 30 feet, which is really not functional if you want to drive the car around at uh, any more than that. Um, and a lot of people have suggested like antenna modifications or some way of boosting the power. And to my knowledge, that's not really possible unless you really know what you're doing. And uh, if you do, you're probably not going to be asking me how to do it. So uh, the most common alternative is to have an Arduino with 
a USB host shield like this and have the Arduino connected to an XB module or some other 933 megahertz radio system. Then the, you have one of these that you keep with you near the controller. So when you're driving the controller, it communicates with the first Arduino. And the first Arduino then sends the data over the XB link to another Arduino with an, uh, an XB and Arduino on the car. Uh, and then the XB modules, there's a wide range of them. Some of them, I believe, that with a claimed um, range of something like 28 miles line of sight. So you can really get any range you want with the system, but you're going to have to have two Arduinos, one of which will have the USB host shield and will communicate with this, and the other one will be on the car and connected only to an XB. They will both, sorry, I meant, I meant to say, they will both be connected to an XB, one of which will have the shield, and the other one will just have the XB and be on the car. And the one with the shield will be communicating with this, and the one without the USB host shield uh, will be on the car and just communicating with the uh, the drive components. So yes, you can extend the range, but not with these components alone. Uh, so that's sort of the the only way that I know of to extend the range, unless you want to go really, really, really uh, fancy and set up like a GPS link or something like that, which I don't know how to do. Um, but then the, the other part of the theory I want to talk about is what's the basics of just what's happening here. And that is that there is a controller and there's either a potentiometer or some sort of voltage divider in here that a little processor on board converts to some range. In this case, it's 0 to 255. 0, 255. 0, 255. 0, 255. And same with all these. And then the buttons actually do have an analog range, but most of the library, uh, you can extract just digital values from them. Uh, so all that's happening is that there is an analog, or rather a digital range of 0 to 255 that's being transmitted by this controller. The Arduino receives that information and then remaps it from 0 to 255 to 0 to 180, which is the range that the servo library uses then the servo library outputs uh, the correct pulse width modulation frequency to both the ESC and the steering servo. So that, that's all it does, is it takes a range of values from this, converts it to another range, and then outputs it as a pulse width modulation signal. Uh, why I wanted to bring that up is uh, people are often confused by the naming of the servo library, and I also don't find it uh, the best. The servo library does work with servos, yes, but really all it's doing is outputting a pulse width modulation signal in the frequency that standard servos and ESCs uh, respond to or can decode. Uh, so really, I think they should have called it the pulse width modulation or PWM library uh, because then it would be maybe a little more clear that you could use it with both servos and ESCs or anything else that uh, communicates over pulse width modulation using the standard uh, frequency, which I believe are, are um, I, I don't want to go into the details, but the, the pulses are from, uh, the pulse range is from 1,000 microseconds to 2,000 microseconds. So that's the range that all the hobby servos and motor controllers will respond to. If you're interested to know more, you can uh, just look pulse width modulation up on uh, Wikipedia. That's where I first uh, read about it. And it's most of the information is there. So uh, that's about it for the theory. I just want people to understand that the servo library is not just for servos, and all it's doing is outputting a pulse width modulation signal in the correct range. And that is why uh, the a certain instance of the servo class is used to control both the ESC and the steering servo. So let's see. Uh, Yes, the next thing I wanted to talk about was actually showing the setup of the system uh, from sort of like scratch to start. It's already plugged in. Uh, I'll show a wiring diagram of that and then exactly the steps that you go through having never used or plugged one of these in before or, or, or your PS3 controller. So it doesn't matter if you have done this before. I'm just going to go through the steps that I go through that I found uh, best for getting it to connect and work properly. Uh, but first, uh, let's see. First thing I want to say, I'm only going to talk about this once because it's not that important. Uh, to power the Arduino, I opted to not try to tap 
the default or the, sorry the battery power directly to the Arduino this is possible but you're going to have to do some soldering and also make sure you don't connect it the wrong way because you can blow up your Arduino so rather I opted for this example to make it as simple as possible to use a 9 volt battery to power the Arduino because um, everyone can find these not everyone knows how to solder uh, then the other thing you're going to need is a 9 volt battery clip and a 2.1 millimeter center positive jack. I bet, I'm pretty sure you can buy these online because this is a very common component for Arduinos, but if not you can get just the battery clip and wires from Radio Shack uh, and then you can buy this component, this is the center positive clip, which it will not focus on. 2.1 millimeter center positive uh, DC jack. I found this at Fry's Electronics, you can find it online, and I did have to solder them together. So I don't know why it's not focusing. Huh. Weird. Anyway, you can look these up. Uh, just search for uh, 2.1 millimeter uh, DC jack. And all you have to make sure to do is that you solder the red or 5 volt or 9 volt in this case wire to the center pin, the center piece, and the ground wire goes to the outside jacket. And if you look up this or how to power the Arduino from 9 volt battery, there is a plenty of documentation on it, so I'm not going to go over that. So uh, this goes into the jack on the Arduino, the DC jack right here. And then you plug in, uh, notice I don't have the Bluetooth dongle in yet. And then I plug in the battery. And that's it. That will power the Arduino, so I'm not going to talk about that part of the circuit for the rest of the uh, this video, because that's the simplest part. So I'm going to show a quick picture of the wiring diagram that I made. It's not a proper one, but I hope that it's more clear to the beginners what's going on here. So I don't know why this won't focus. It won't autofocus. Okay, there we go. So uh, to make this really clear, I color coded these things. So just to be clear, this box, or rather these three wires, are referring to these standard wires that go black, red, white, uh, white or like this one does, it goes black, red, yellow, and I'm talking about this part of it, this this clip right here, this this servo plug. Um, your colors may not be exactly the same. I've seen some of these that have both or orange and green, uh, but it will always be the same pattern. There's a very dark color, a color in the middle, and then a light color. The darkest color is always ground, the lightest color is always signal, and the one in the middle is always 5 volts. So. Uh, just keep in mind that when I'm showing you the wiring diagram, my color scheme for the wires is I did not have a yellow pen, or obviously you can't use a white pen. So this is ground, this is uh, 5 volts, and this is signal. I just used green to make it clear. So these are the two servo plugs. One's going to be coming from the ESC, and one's going to be coming from the servo. Now the first thing you should do is connect the center wire, which is the red 5 volt wire, directly from the ESC pin to the servo. What this is doing is the ESC has a battery eliminator circuit in it, or also known as a BEC, that provides a clean 5 volt signal that powers the servo. We don't want this going to the Arduino because uh, the Arduino needs more than 5 volts to be powered. It has a uh, voltage, uh, uh, it, has a, it steps down the voltage from higher voltage, and if you give it 5, it may not work. Unless you know what you're doing, like I said, I'm just trying to keep your Arduino safe by powering it just from the 9 volt battery. So what instead what's going to happen is the ESC power is going to go directly to the servo. So you're just going to put a jumper between the ESC servo plug and, or sorry, the ESC plug and the servo plug. And I just used uh, a male jumper. This in the middle, in the middle. So red to red or whatever the center color is on your connector. Then uh, the ground from both of these plugs needs to go to the Arduino, or you could connect, uh, all you need to make sure is that the ground from this, the ground from this, and the ground from the Arduino are all connected. And how I did that is there are uh, conveniently, it got unplugged here, the Arduino has two ground pins. Let's get this to focus. Yes. Right here. Oops, I can't get my pen in there. Right there. On your shield. So GND means ground. 
these two. Make sure to only get these two because this is a 5 volt supply and this is the VN. Um, but plug the black wires or the darkest wires from your ESC and servo wires into the ground. G and D pins on the shield here, which are obviously this is multiplexed directly to the Arduino, so ground. There are two, two ground sockets right there. Uh, and then the last thing is just to plug your ESC signal wire into digital output 3 and your servo uh, signal wire into digital output 5. Now depending on what you, you may have modified these numbers in the code or if you find that your steering is driving the motor and the motor is driving the steering then maybe these wires are backwards or the numbers are backwards. Either way you can just swap the wires or go in the code and swap the numbers. The wires, swapping wires would probably be uh, easier. Uh, and that's, that's literally it. That's the only wiring there is besides the 9 volt power supply to the Arduino. <laughs> so uh, that's it for everything up to actually demonstrating it. So now I'm going to uh, put my camera back up on a stand. I'm going to step through, go through all the steps I do to get this to connect because it is difficult. Sometimes it doesn't really doesn't want to connect. Okay. So for this example, I'm going to plug in my computer as well. This is not necessary. This is just so you can see what happens on the terminal. And let me turn my computer on here. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is you're going to take your dongle, your Bluetooth dongle, and you're going to plug it in once the Arduino is on. But I'm going to put the camera on the screen so you see what happens. So. So this is the terminal. I should probably show where this comes from. Uh, in your Arduino IDE here, it's this button on the far right corner, right here. Focus. It won't focus. There we go. There we go. So the thing that says serial monitor. Click there, and it opens. And if nothing is plugged into the uh, host shield, all you'll see is PS3 Bluetooth library started. This may also happen if it's not communicating with your dongle. Now, uh, I need to be really clear here, uh, I have enabled U uh, debugging in the library, which you will should probably do to make sure uh, you can see all the outputs that the library is uh, running. So if there's an error or something like that, you're guaranteed to see it. And I have a video, the second video of my two-part series on how to use the USB host shield, which I will have a link to. Um, I explain exactly how to turn on debugging and several other uh, interesting features. So you will want to do that just to make sure you get the same output ID to check that it's working. Uh, the next thing is a really common mistake is that in the code you'll see that the baud rate is set to uh, let's see what is this 115 200 so 115,200 that is the baud rate that the Arduino is communicating over. You must have the same baud rate down here in the terminal mod right here. You must set this at the same. If these, uh, if the baud rate here and the baud rate in your code are not the same, you will just get gibberish all over the screen. So like random characters and spaces and things like that. So if you're having that problem, it's most likely your baud rates are not the same. So uh, other than that, this is booting up the host shield and Arduino without anything plugged into it. Now I'm going to plug the dongle in and you will see the following. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what comes up with the debugging turned off, but if debugging is turned on, this is what you'll see. And this is the important part. This is the address of the Bluetooth dongle and you need to set the address in the controller to that. And how you do that is once you've plugged the dongle in and you've, got, you've seen this message, you can, oops, bumped it. You can unplug the dongle and then plug in your PS3 controller with a standard uh, with the USB cable, so the big one and the little one. But as long as it fits in the controller, you're fine. So I'm going to now plug the controller in to the USB host shield, and you'll see what happens. Note that you have to have plugged in the Bluetooth dongle and then unplugged it before you do this, otherwise the code will not have this address. So there it is. I just plugged it in. It says DualShock 3 connected, and it sets the address to the same thing it is here. Now the system is ready to go. So all you have to do is unplug the controller and plug 
the dongle back in and you're going to get a repeat of the original message. And it says waiting for incoming connection request. And now that the controller has been programmed with the correct address, once you turn it on, they should immediately connect. So I'm gonna show that here. Uh, the lighting is not so great. So I'm gonna press the button and you'll see the lights are blinking. And oops, I may have blocked that, whoops. Uh, what happened is right here, this is what the terminal spits out. So that's what you'll see. And then the light turns solid. Also, if you happen to be using the exact same dongle as me, it will be blinking. But I, that doesn't, I don't think that happens on all of them. If it's not happening, it may not be a problem as long as you see uh, these messages. So now the system's ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what happens when it runs, though I think most people have probably already seen this. Back up here a bit. Focus. I need to find a battery. I have a LiPo lying around. I don't use these. <laughs> if you can avoid it on this car because it overheats. But here goes. So assuming everything's working, the light here is solid. I should be able to control. That's it. I'm not going to run the motor because it shakes and the car will fall off and everything will fall apart. But uh, if I move this stick, the wheels will spin either forward or backwards depending on which way I push it. So that's it. That's all there is to it. Just a couple wires and this library and it works. Uh, that's it for the demonstration. And just one last thing I want to point out in the code. The part, oops, this is the wrong one. This is the code. This is what's available on my website right here. So when it says servo one right, one of these is actually the servo and the other one's actually the ESC. In fact, servo two is the ESC because it's being controlled by the left hat. So that's the left joystick. And servo one is the steering servo. And I'm using this map function, which takes the input, which is this first part before the first comma, and scales it uh, from a range of 0 to 255 to 0 to 180. So the range that's coming out of this PS3 controller when you move the stick is 0 to 125, 155, excuse me, which you'll recognize as 8-bit. And it's being scaled from that value to 0 to 180. And that's just what the servo library likes. The servo library likes a value from 0 to 180. You can manually write to the microsecond range, so you're welcome to scale it to that and use that function. But for simplicity's sake, I use the standard write uh, function, which takes a value from 0 to 180. So that's uh, just a little bit of theory. And you'll notice here that these numbers are reversed. And all this does is I must have found that the car was driving the wrong direction, so I just switched. Uh, one set of these numbers. So when the controller says zero, this will output 180. And when the controller says, uh, the PS3 controller, excuse me, says one, 255, which would be full stick, it uh, has a value, the actual value being written to the servo is zero. And every value in between is scaled linearly. So that, uh, so if ever anything's driving backwards or you need to reverse the direction of scaling something, you can always just reverse the scale numbers here. So. I hope that gives some people some ideas uh, how to use this function. You can always look up the documentation for all these uh, Arduino functions. And uh, that's about it. The rest of this is pretty much copied directly from the example code that's included with the library. The task function updates the information on the controller. So you need to call this as regularly as possible to reduce lag. This is what updates new information. Uh, and then when this just says only drive the servo and ESC if the controller is connected. That's what this, this is what this line is doing. Uh, this is also pulled directly from the example. If the controller is not connected, write the servo and the ESC to 90. 90 happens to be in the middle. So this would make the ser steering servo point straight, the wheel straight, and this makes the ESC turn off. So it's neither driving forwards nor backwards. And then I, this is also pulled directly from the example code. And this is just the disconnect sequence, which I will demonstrate now. So if I pull up, uh, let me pull up this. Oh no, I forgot. If you pull this up, it might mess it up. Let's see. Ah, 
Yes, that's one thing I should have remembered. If you open the, this monitor while the PS3 controller is connected, it resets the system and then you lose your connection. So this says I'm connected, but the dongle is not blinking and nothing will be working. So that's unfortunate. All I was going to demonstrate was that um, this last little piece of code that is pulled from the example code, right? Uh, where is it? Yeah, right here. All that does is when you press the uh, yes button, it uh, terminates the communication and turns off the controller. Otherwise, actually I can demonstrate that because it's ready, so you'll see the system will come back on. Good, so it's good. I will demonstrate that really quickly. Otherwise, you have to wait for the controller to time out to turn off because there's no way to manually turn it off. So I'm going to press the PS button right now. And there you go. The uh, You'll see the debug information here. And the controller gets turned off. You'll see there are no lights on it. And the dongle has stopped blinking. And that terminates the communication. And if you want to turn it back on, you just press the button. Connects again. Goes solid. You'll see the repeat of the information there, and it's all good to go. So uh, that's it. If uh, anyone has questions or comments, uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the video description or go to my website and see if there are more comments there or resources that can help you out. So I hope that helps out.